Hey guys, Matt from Mr. Matt's Arcade here. Today I wanted to do an updated video on how to add games to your Alpha Max 3D game board. I'm going to show you two different methods and I'm going to go into a little more detail than I did in my previous video. So first you want to remove your SD card from your game board. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, you can check out one of my other videos that shows you the easy way to remove the SD card. You'll put the SD card in an SD card reader and you'll insert it into your, your computer. Um, in order to edit the database, you're going to want to download DB Browser for SQLite. Um, that's the program I use to edit the database. I'm sure there are other ones that work as well. So let's take a look at the SD card and I'll show you a couple things. So the file contents of your SD card should look similar to this. Let's first go into the lib folder and take a look at the startgame.sh. This is the file that tells the game board which emulator to run or which core to use for RetroArch. Um, I opened this up in Notepad++. Uh, you can open it up in anything because you're just looking at it right now, but Notepad++ is recommended if at some point you want to edit this file in order to add more cores. Uh, this game board already includes a bunch of cores, including ones that haven't been used. But we'll take a quick look here. So right here, zero is FBA, FB Alpha 2012. One is Nestopia. Two is Daphne. However, unfortunately, that one's not actually on here. Three is another FB Alpha. Four is MAME 2003. That's one of your arcade ones. Five is Genesis plus GX. Six is SNES 9X. Seven is MB, MGBA. Eight is MooPen64 Plus. Um, if you're not sure what each one of these cores does or what system it runs, um, you can check out Google to figure it out. I know what most of them are, but not on all of them, honestly. Uh, the MuPen one is an N64. PS, PCSX Rearmed, that's PlayStation. Metafin PCE Fast, that's number 10. I believe that's PC Engine. Number 11 is Metafin W Swan, which is Wonder Swan. 12 is, I'm going to butcher all these names, Desmu 2015. 13 is Genesis Plus GX. 14, FB Alpha. 15 is Stella. 16 is Atari 800. 17 is Pro System, 18 is MAME 2016, and that's actually incorrect. It's actually MAME 2010 core, but for some reason they labeled it MAME 2016. 19 is labeled MAME 2016 again, but that number actually loads up the PSP emulator. Uh, 20 is Flycast, 21 is DC Sunchip, 22 is Swan Station, and if you have Pandora installed, you'll have number 9000 here, which is their script running file. All right, so that's a quick rundown of the emulators that are on here. If you wanted to add new ones, you would just make a new line with a new number and put the RetroArch core in the correct place on the game on the um, SD card. So then we will go ahead and open up the games database file. 
which is in the res folder. You're looking for one that says games.db. Um, I have several of them on here because I've played with a couple different database files and have some backups. But the one you want is games.db. So you can go ahead and open that. And it'll look like this when you open it. So what we're gonna do to start, I'm gonna go through and show you the couple of different things and I'll show you two different ways to add games. So one, you go to browse data, click on this table section, go down to table EN. This is your English display name. So this is how you would want it to look on the games menu. And then if you go to table EN match, this is your search name. This is the name that would show up in the search menu. And then if we go to table game, we go to table game and this is the one where you would input your ROM file and the multiple different settings. So let's go back and we will start in table EN. So to manually add a game, you do new record brings you down to the bottom here and this first one in the ID category that is the number so just add one number to the previous from the previous one and this here is our display name we'll do test game And then click write changes and then go in here let's go over to table en match do new record and it'll do the same number and then this is how you would like it to look in the search menu the search menu is set up to search by the first letter or the name so for test game we would do capital t capital t on the rest of the name so you do and then you go up here to write changes then the next time we go down to tabled game until you know what all of these columns are your best bet is to just duplicate a record but first we'll quickly go through what the columns are and I made myself a little cheat sheet, which I might have to reference here in a second. So your first category game ID, that's your game number. Game, that is your ROM name. Suffix is your ROM file extension. Video ID is the same as game ID. Class type is... Class type is system category, i.e. Dreamcast, N64, MAME, etc. The next column is game type. This is your emulator number. This would be one of the numbers that I went over from the startgame.sh file. Hard is your difficulty level. The next one is path. That is your ROM path. The next one is mode. 1 equals 2D, 2 equals 3D. The next one is category, that is your game type or category, i.e. shooting, puzzle, etc. The next row or next column is fave, that's to add it to the favorites, zero is no, one is yes. The next one is viz, that's to make the game visible, one is visible, two is hidden. The next one is lives, that's your starting lives. The next one is a vert. If it's a vertical game, you want to put a one in there. Coin time, I don't know. Player's coin, I don't know. And then we have hide save state. You can hide the save state from the pause menu. One equals hide save state. And then the DELFS path is the file path to nvram files or nmem files or .fs files so that would be the path to those files if your specific game needs one of those 
And then we have Ian Match. That is your English search name. SP Match is your Spanish search name. And ZH Match, I believe, is the Chinese search name. So that is all the different columns here at the top. So until you get comfortable with adding in those different ones and you know what each column does, the easiest thing to do is duplicate a record. So I will pick Uh, Mortal Kombat, the first one, which actually, for most of you, isn't on there. It's a game I added. But anyways, pick a game that you already know, such as GT 3D, that'd be a main 2000 game, something like that. And then you go down to whichever one you pick, and you right-click to Duplicate Record. And then exit out of your little search there. Scroll down to the bottom. And this here is my duplicate record. So we edit this first one and put in the number. The second one, that is your ROM name. The next one is your file extension. This one is your game number again. And then you don't necessarily have to go through and change the other ones because you copied a game you already know, but you can go through and just double check them all. And then we go down to the very end for the end match. Helps if you click in the right spot down to this one again this would be your search name and then you do write changes and if you did everything correctly when you all right, so you write changes, and then you could go ahead and close out of it. And then you would want to go up here to Game. Here are the different ROM folders. Most of them are self-explanatory about which system they are. But you want to go to CPS. This is your arcade game section. And this is where you would copy your ROM file. And if you wanted a video preview, it needs to be an MP4 format with the same name as the ROM file. So you would copy those files into here. Um, if you don't have a video, you can leave it blank. It doesn't have to have one. And then you would go ahead and eject your SD card and put it into the game board and fire it up. And if you did everything correctly at the end of the 2D or 3D list, depending on which which game you added, your new game would display. And then go ahead and try to load it up. If it works, you're all set. If it doesn't work or it doesn't display, go back in and double check your work and or make sure you chose the right emulator and that you have the right ROM and all that type of stuff. All right, so now I'm going to show you another way that I just figured out today. So if we go over here to execute SQL, in here you can put in um, different SQL statements, uh, insert and stuff like that. You can look up how to do it, but I'm also going to share one that I pre-made. So if you go to open SQL file, And I will put a link so you could download this one, but I put together an SQL file for adding a MAME 2010 game. So go ahead and open that up. 
And in here, it does the same thing that we just did. So you would go here, and this first section is adding the entry into the game table. So you'd go down to here where it says ROM name. And you would type in your ROM name. Oh, my ROM name is going to be game test. Then this next one, this is your file extension. And if it is a MAME 2010 game, they're always zip files, so you don't have to change that. And this next section here, this adds all the different numbers we were talking about um, in the different columns. And then if you scroll down here to where it says search name, change that to the name of your ROM. that section and then this statement right here adds an entry into table en this is your display name so if you scroll down here where it says display name at the end here go ahead and type in your display name and then this next statement adds one to the table en match which is your search name so in here, go ahead and type in your search name. All right, and then you go up and hit this little button here. This executes all the statements. If it was done correctly down here, it'll say executed successfully. So now let's go up to browse data. Let's go to table EN. Let's scroll down to the bottom and see if there's one called game test. Game test and make sure the number is correct. Yes, it is. So now let's go over to table EN match. Scroll down to the bottom. Game test. There it is with the correct number. And now we go over to table game. Scroll down to the bottom. Correct number, game test, correct emulator number, and I believe all the other columns are correct, or at least will work. You may need to tweak those numbers at some point, but they should still work as is. And we go down to the end, and game test, game test, game test. There we go. So now I've shown you two different ways to add games to the Alpha Max 3D game board. Uh, remember when you're all done, you want to do right changes and that will save the changes that you made. Then you can exit out of there. And then you can click over here, click eject. Now pop that out, pop it in your game board and fire it up and check and see if your new games display and if they work. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked it. If you liked this video, please take the time to click like and comment. And if you want to see some more videos, go ahead and subscribe as well. Um, you can also check out my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Mr. Matt's Arcade or my website, Mr. Matt's Arcade.com. I do often have the Alpha Max 3D game board in stock and for sale on my website. Uh, if it's ever out of stock or back ordered and you need one, just come, send me a message and I'll let you know when I'm going to have them back in. And if you need any other custom arcade parts or if you're in the New England area and you need a custom built arcade machine, I build lots of different models and you can check out some of the info on that on my Facebook and website. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, game on, my friends.